Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're back on the V6 a little bit. Uh, since I put the crank in, I've got the pistons in. I've got brand new roller lifters in there. I have the lifter retainers in there. Uh, balance shaft is, is just kind of laying in there. I'm still waiting on a front bearing for that. Um, cam retainer plate is on. I have a melling timing set. And I think you can see when you put this in, just make sure your marks are lined up. Right there and there. There is the balance shaft gears. And again, hope you can see that. You got to time these right. Right there. Right there. Get those timed right. A little bit of Loctite on that guy. Uh, there's a balance shaft retainer. There's the bearing I'm waiting on. It should be here uh, any day now. Um, I'm changing all the rocker arms, putting those in new. Got a bag of push rods there. Got a new oil pump. And the oil pump uh, comes with the nylon sleeve that holds this and your shaft with a nylon sleeve. You can get this shaft where you could delete the nylon sleeve if you don't like it. It's got a set screw. Um, so, th so they make them different ways. Uh, the factory always used the nylon sleeve. You don't have to use that. Uh, you can upgrade this shaft to um, get rid of that nylon sleeve if you want to. And I got a new screen. Those can be a little tricky to get in. I'll show you how I do it in a future video. And um, parts for this guy can be a little tricky. Uh, when you get your cam bearings, there's two different sets of cam bearings. In the front of the right cylinder head, there's a number. Kind of gets you in on there. Okay, you see that T right there? This is a T motor. So when you buy your cam bearings, look and see if you have that T because it's a different set of cam bearings. Um, just be conscious of that when you're buying parts or you get all screwed up on that. Um, so uh, with the T is one set of cam bearings and then without is another. <clears throat> and it's always on the right cylinder head. Uh, right in front of the right cylinder head on the block, stamped in the block. It's also, just in case you can't see it there, on the back of the left side, you see the T again right there. Critical when you're uh, getting parts for these guys. A lot, of, uh, a lot of places you can go wrong getting parts and then you'll get your cam bearings in. You can't get your cam in there um, or your bearings won't go in. So you can get screwed up on that. But... Uh, bearing is going to come in for the balance shaft and then all our whole front timing set can go in and the oil pump and then we can get the uh, timing cover on and the oil pan and just one thing I want to tell you about the oil pan in case you're getting rid of the um, oil level indicator switch uh, I'll show you what the plug is that goes in there Okay guys, here's the oil pan. I've been cleaning that up a little bit. And here is your oil indicator. When this is up, your light is not on. If you get low oil, uh, that'll drop down and um, send a signal to the light and the light will come on. Uh, I'm not going to use this cause, because I, you know, I don't need a, a, a smart engine or anything. I, you know, I know how to check oil and stuff. Uh, and this is just plastic, and um, I don't know. I just don't. I don't. I don't want it in there. I'm not going to wire it in, and I don't want a piece of plastic hanging off the oil pan. If you guys want to plug that, if anybody's doing this and putting in an old Jeep or anything, you can get a plug. This is a steel plug with a copper crush washer, and that's a uh, 20 millimeter. Uh, 1.5 thread 
that'll go right in there when I tighten it up the copper washer will crush and it looks better and like I say I'm not gonna wire that in anyway so um, 20 millimeter by 1.5 and uh, that'll go right in and seal up your oil pan um, now the oil pan basically I just got to clean that up. I'm gonna pressure wash that there's still some junk in there and uh, and that'll be ready to go on I did uh, I did get the heads apart um, they're, they're a little rusty and stuff I'm gonna clean these up uh, I got the left and right bank stripped down uh, I'm gonna uh, <clears throat> pressure wash them and uh, check and see how flat they are I measured the guides uh, there's not a bit of wear on the guides the valves the valve seats uh, the exhaust seats are a little boogered up I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go in and recut those and we're gonna give a cut on the uh, intakes as well uh, these are definitely worn out they're they're pitted a little bit so I am gonna have to cut those so um, there'll be some new valves because the exhaust valves are a little I don't like the exhaust valves I'm not gonna cut them I'm just gonna get some new ones uh, intakes aren't bad but I'm gonna replace those as well and we'll have to go over and do a three angle valve job on the seats um, not a big deal but they're filthy I gotta wash them and then we'll get to uh, cutting the seats so just a little bit to bring you up to date on the V6 uh, I know not a lot of guys are following along on the V6 but the few guys that are uh, be careful when you're buying your parts and uh, just take it nice and slow and easy measure everything and uh, follow along with the video and you'll be able to put your V6 back together with no trouble so just another shorty again uh, thanks for watching uh, we'll catch you on the next one